Hey my dudes, my name is Cecilia and welcome to my kitchen here in Stockholm, Sweden. In today's episode of Thanksgiving Sides and Sweets, we are making apple pecan crumble pie. To me, it's not Thanksgiving without apple pie. So I really wanted to do some sort of apple something. I wanted it to be a pie and I knew that I would never be able to top last year's pecan tart. So I decided to combine the two. But anyways, instead of me talking about it, let me just show you, let's get started. Begin by making the pie dough. Into a large bowl, throw 300 grams of flour, two tablespoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. Mix together a bit, then add in 200 grams of cold cubed butter. Take each cube and squish it between your fingers. We want to create flakes of butter. Just keep mixing and like flaking out the butter until you have large pea-sized pieces. Add in 100 grams of ice cold water and gently mix together. Place the dough on a piece of plastic wrap, press into a disc shape and wrap tightly. Place in the fridge for at least one hour, but preferably overnight. To make the crumble topping, place in a large bowl, 100 grams of flour, 50 grams of brown sugar, 50 grams of white sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon, 100 grams of chopped pecans, and 100 grams of cold cubed butter. Mix together. We're not looking for perfectly homogeneous dough, we want crumbly and loose. Throw into a container and put in the freezer until ready to use. To make the apple filling, first squeeze one lemon into a large bowl of water. Peel the apples, placing them in the water as soon as they're peeled so they don't brown. For this pie, you will need 10 to 12 apples, depending on their size and the kind of height you want on your pie. I personally like a really tall dome, so I use 12. Once all the apples are peeled, slice into half a centimeter or a quarter inch thick slices and place back into the acidulated water. It's good to use a variety of apples when making any kind of apple pie. Some apples hold their shape, some apples break down, some are tart, some are more sweet. A mix gives you the best of all worlds. Strain the apples and place in a large pot. Add 100 grams of sugar and 100 grams of apple juice concentrate and place on the stove over medium heat. You can add a splash of vanilla extract too if you want. Let cook, stirring occasionally until the apples are al dente. Carefully pour off as much of the liquid as you can into a small pot, then pour the apples into containers. While the apple filling cools, boil the leftover apple liquid until it's reduced and syrupy, about five minutes. Don't worry if it gets a bit gloopy, it's just the pectin doing its thing. Pour into a container and set to the side to cool. To make this pie, take the pie dough from the fridge, sprinkle with flour, and roll it out until it is an eighth of an inch or three millimeters thick. Cut a large circle out of the dough, place on the pie plate, and press it in. Tuck the dough under to form a lip, then pressing with your fingers, form a decorative edge. Prick all over with a fork. Stick in the freezer for 10 to 15 minutes to harden a bit. This makes it easier to line with foil. Make sure every bit is covered with foil. Pour in some pie weights and then pop in a 200 degree Celsius, 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Once the time is up, take the pie out and carefully take off the beans and foil. Try not to spill beans everywhere like I did. The dough should be set and be able to hold itself up but still be quite raw. Brush with beaten egg to seal it. Bake for another 10 to 15 minutes or until a light golden brown. There's definitely a little bit of a fine line when you're par baking this because you want it to be basically fully cooked through on the bottom. But if you get your edges too golden, like we are gonna be putting it back in the oven for another half an hour, 40 minutes. And so you don't want them to get too dark. I definitely would not wanna take this any darker. We're gonna put this to the side for a second while it cools down and we kind of get ourselves ready for the next part. Off to the side you go. Our apples and they are cooled down and our reserved apple juice that we have thickened. Also the crumble. Into our reduced apple juice, we want about a tablespoon of cornstarch. I like to do it this way just so that there's not any like puddle of liquid in the bottom. Mix these two together as best as possible and pour this over your apples. This way we get apples that are juicy but they stick together and they're not like floating in a swimming pool of apple juice. 
take our pie back. Now you can wait until this pie crust cools all the way, um, but there's not really like a need to, and I don't have the patience for that. So we're just gonna, so carefully pour all of your apple pie filling in. It's a lot of apple for the size of pie shell, but I really like that like classic domed apple pie look. And you get that by having a lot of apples. So then you just go around, squish it into place. And like, guys, I wash my hands 10 trillion times. So my hands are clean and it's getting rebaked. So don't freak out. But it is the best way to like squish it into pie shape. Look at that. It really looks like an apple pie. Next up is our crumble. And this part is not difficult. It's just a little, it can be a little annoying. Not even annoying, but you know, you're just gonna take your crumble and you kind of gotta like stick it on. This isn't really a sprinkle kind of crumble. This is a <laughs> stick it on to the pie kind of crumble. It sticks super well when it bakes. It doesn't like fall off at all. And if you like a really thick layer of crumble, I'm sure you could double the crumble and take out some of the apples, you know, this is 12 apples. You could do eight and it would be easier, but this is how I like my apple pie. Also for those of you who are allergic to nuts or don't like pecans, you can switch out the pecans one-to-one -one with oatmeal. And that's gonna get you a really classic crumble crust that is delicious. I have done that many times before. That's actually the like original recipe. And I just switched out the oatmeal for pecans. Oh my gosh, so tall and beautiful. My countertop's a mess. <laughs> now, while we were doing this, I also turned the oven down to 350 because we want to have the sauce around the apples be bubbling, be boiling, cooking those apples just a little bit more, but especially cooking out that cornstarch in the sauce without burning our crust or burning the top. And so you don't wanna put it into a 400 degree oven you wanna be sitting more around 350. And back into the oven we go. We did it. <laughs> I'm super excited about it. I think it turned out really nice. Oh, I would like to mention one thing as well. This is quite a buttery crust and obviously the apples are super juicy. So I put a tray underneath my pie, but the pie wasn't sitting on it because then your bottom will never bake. So the pie's sitting on the rack, but at the very bottom of the oven, I have a tray because there's now like butter and apple juice drippings and all sorts of stuff on this tray on the bottom of my oven but now I don't have to clean the bottom of the oven. I just have to clean the tray. So a little pro tip for you. Oy, 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 oy. There's so much apple, it's such a thick boy. Oh my goodness. Mm, that's so good. So much apple, I love it. The only thing that could make this better would be a little bit of vanilla ice cream or some malted milk ice cream, which conveniently, I have recipes for both of those things, you guys. They're gonna be down below in the description. Oh my God. This is some good pie. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked today's video, then please like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope that you have a great day and that I will see you around tomorrow. Hey,